having had the opportunity to speak with Diliana and having had her as my guest on uh, Humanity vs. Insanity uh, about 10 days ago now, I, uh, actually it was one of the easiest shows I think I've ever done because uh, Diliana was so on top of her subject, it was just like, yeah, run. And uh, you know, what you're going to see here is the enthusiasm, the insightfulness and the spirit of genuine investigative journalism. Not done from behind the screen of a computer or synthesizing the reports that are elsewhere on the web, but actually getting out on the ground and doing her own research. So uh, and it's her first time speaking in the UK. Yeah. And uh, of course, it, it's not her first. What, what number language is English for you? Second? OK. Third, maybe? Yeah. So. Obviously, and it's always a, a pleasure to have people from overseas. And, uh, you know, so do bear in mind that English is not her first language. And uh, so she's having to sort of think and talk in, um, in a different language that which she normally does. But uh, enjoy and it be inspired by the enthusiasm of Dilinana Gatanshiva. <laughs> um, in short, uh First, I want to thank Ian. I want to thank Patrick from 21st Century Wire for inviting me to be here and to be able to talk about uh, uh, my last investigation. Uh, in brief, I'm a Bulgarian uh, investigative journalist uh, and a, mid a Middle East correspondent. Um, uh, why and how I came across this uh, topic? Uh, in December of 2016, I was reporting on the Battle of Aleppo. I was with the local cameraman when the jihadists from the so-called moderate rebels, uh, Al-Qaeda, retreated from their positions. I got inside nine underground warehouses full of heavy weapons uh, with Bulgaria as their country of origin. Uh, when I got back in my home country, I traced back uh, these shipments, and it turned out that uh, these Bulgarian weapons were uh, just a small part of a bigger international weapons shipment network organized by the US Special Operations Command, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and uh, my home country. Uh, was just one of the many countries involved in this international scheme uh, on uh, 350 diplomatic flights. Probably this is uh, what you haven't heard here in the UK, uh, that all these weapons were transported uh, to Syria, Iraq, Africa, wherever you, you can imagine around the world on diplomatic flights uh, carried out by uh, the Azerbaijan's uh, state run company, Silkway Airlines, so I published this investigation, 21st century, well, uh, yes, they were the only uh, UK media outlet which published this investigation, and I, I got publicity, uh, not in Western media, no, but uh, uh, thanks to Patrick, this story uh, made headlines, and uh, I started to follow all the weapons programs of the Pentagon. Uh, to my shock, I found out that uh, these weapons programs um, uh, for weapons, Eastern European weapons on diplomatic flights to Syria and to Yemen, uh, they're nothing compared to this. Uh, the US bio laboratories. I found uh, documents um, about uh, Pentagon bio laboratories um, in um, uh, the country of uh, the Republic of Georgia in particular, and uh, I started to, f to follow that uh, story. I wanted to, to, to find uh, why the Pentagon has a military biolaboratory in uh, such a small country so far away, but bordering on the US main arrival, Russia. And I got access to documents, uh, talked to witnesses, and uh, this is how I found out that the Pentagon has biolaboratories in 25 countries across the world. And these biolaboratories, as you, uh, you, you have the opportunity to see on the map that I prepared for you, uh, 
These bio laboratories border on the US main rivals, Russia, China, and Iran. What I'm going to talk about now, um, this is on the photo that I featured, this one. This is the US um, military factory. I will talk about it in detail. I will show you um, uh, a lot of documents uh, about the projects, uh, the viruses, bacteria, and toxins produced here at this, this military facility. It is in the United uh, States. But this is just one of the many biolaboratories, of the many facilities. Well, I'm going to talk about synthetic viruses. Uh, GM insects are engineered uh, for military needs. This is um, probably the most, uh, I, I was really frightened when I, I, I um, verified the, the authenticity of the documents about uh, the military experiments uh, with uh, insects. I'm going to talk about ethnic bioweapons. And uh, I want to stress that this is absolutely independent investigative uh, journalism. Uh, everything that I do, I'm a freelance journalist. Nobody's behind me, probably only 21st century <laughs> wire. The only they publish my investigations here in the UK. And I'm very thankful to them. Um, in the beginning, I want to um, give more information about uh, um, one comparison between biological weapons uh, versus nuclear weapons. Biological weapons, if used under optimal conditions, have greater killing capacity than nuclear weapons. Uh, the information that I uh, show now, uh, it is from um, a report to the US Congress uh, from 1993. You can read it, I featured uh, this uh, uh, very interesting report. I never knew that for example, 100 uh, kilograms of anthrax, sorry, 100 kilogram, kilograms anthrax spores uh, could cause between one and three million deaths. I didn't know that one gram of botulinum toxin by the inhalation, inhalational root can kill as many as one million people, this, this one. This can kill one million people, this can kill uh, three million people. This, this is uh, one megaton hydrogen bomb. Uh, its detonation uh, in a major urban area would result in between 500,000 and 1.9 million deaths. So you can compare and you, you can uh, realize why biological weapons are more uh, powerful and dangerous than nuclear weapons, but nobody talks about biological weapons. So uh, we must all hold uh, our governments accountable because uh, not only the United States has such pro programs. So in, the, in the United Kingdom, bottom down, uh, as we all <laughs> read recently, also had such programs and still have. Here, uh, in short, um, the name of uh, this um, uh, program of the United States uh, is um, Cooperative Biological Engagement Program, and it is uh, 2.1 billion uh, uh, military program. And uh, now I want to show you on the map you can see where these biolaboratories are located, mainly around Russia, China, Iran, plus Africa. Uh, this is the structure, three US um, uh, departments and agencies, uh, they uh, are involved in the military program, De the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, US Army Testing and um, uh, uh, <laughs> evaluation Command and Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. I will start with uh, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency because uh, it is in charge of the biolaboratories. Here, this is uh, the Luga Center. This is uh, the Pentagon Biolaboratory in Georgia. It is located just 70 kilometers from the US uh, Vaziani 
military base. Here, this is Luga Center. Here, this is uh, the U.S. Vaziani military air base in the capital of Tbilisi. Tasked with the military program are biologists from the U.S. Army Medical Research Unit in Georgia, along with private contractors. The Biosafety Level 3 laboratory is uh, accessible only to U.S. citizens with security clearance. They are accorded diplomatic uh, immunity and the uh, uh, agreement between the United States and Georgia on defense cooperation. It was signed in 2002. Um, if you want to read more about uh, the projects, the do doc documentation about these projects, here I featured a link. Uh, again, you can read the article uh, in full, uh, published by, the, uh, by 21st Century Wire. Uh, among the projects, uh, research on bioagents such as anthrax, tularemia, and viral diseases such as Crimean Congo, hemorrhagic fever, and the collection of biological samples for future experiments. This is what is written in the documents. Future experiments. Now, this is uh, the proof here that this uh, program is classified information because um, according to the Defense of Department requirements for contractors under the Defense Threat Reduction Program in former Soviet Union countries such as Georgia, Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan, uh, the American employees performing work under this program must be only American citizens here, it is written, and must have been granted um, appropriate security clearance. Uh, here, this is the agreement that I talked about between the United States and uh, Georgia. Now, I will pause the presentation for a short while to um, offer you to see the reaction of the U.S. Assistant Secretary um, of the United States when I asked him about this. Why uh, foreign, uh, foreigners, American citizens with diplom diplomatic uh, uh, immunity and uh, security clearance, why and to what exactly they uh, do in Georgia or in this military uh, biolaboratory at the Luga Center? And uh, his answer was, uh, a surprise. I uh, offer you to see what he said. Why has the Pentagon been operating military biolaboratories in 25 countries, bordering on the U.S. Uh, main rivals, Russia, China, and Iran? And why has the number of deadly outbreaks in all those countries increased dramatically since the start of the military program of the United States in these countries? Oh. I will just say unequivocally and undeniably the U.S. does not have a military biological weapons program, period. End of statement. Uh, Number two, we have been working, and I do know for the Department of Defense, they've been working with partners in parts of the world to ensure that those laboratories, and we train them on how to do diagnostic tests on these diseases, to ensure that they can manage them and also safely secure those pathogens so they're not accessible by terrorists or by criminals who would do ill with them. Why are all these projects classified information? All these biolaboratories uh, of the Pentagon in 25 countries across the world, why are they classified information? They're not classified. They're openly uh, available to anyone who wants to look at them. No, I tried. Uh, okay, okay, okay. No, this is not true. They're classified think... information. No, no, no. You had a chance. It's not an investigation here. I'm very Why sorry. Why are you talking about? Uh, but of about course, but I will not let you. Why can't I will talk not about give you the word real, like this. We, we try to answer your questions, please. I know that you have done a good job. I know you want to ask questions about that, but that's not the place. If you want to. Talk to Mr. Well, Kent, like you can case. take an appointment on another day. Case closed. Thank you very much. Just one more question. No, no more questions. Yeah, we can take questions right now. What is the need of military biolaboratories of the United States in 25 countries across the world? You can't answer that question. It's, That's not his capacity. This is public area. I can, uh, sorry, I can use the elevator. I can use the elevator. Sorry, not this one. This one's full. No, it is not full. Please, I can use the elevator. 
I can use the elevator. Come. No more questions, then. Why not? Okay, we're either going down. Why is the Pentagon investing $65 million dollars in gene editing? I'm sorry. The gene editing is part of these programs. Can you answer why? No, we can't. We're not uh, after this uh, incident, I, uh, the security guards uh, came and we were expelled. In Bulgarian language, we say, uh, like dirty cats. <laughs> this is the word that I, I can use. Uh, anyway, um, so you see, he said, these bar laboratories are openly available to anybody who wants to look at them. No, this is not true. Everything is classified. And uh, only American citizens can look at them. I'm not an American citizen. I can't look at them. Anyway, uh, this is just uh, one of the many lies that Robert Kadlik, uh, the US Assistant uh, Secretary uh, at the US Department of Health, uh, blatantly, uh, he lied blatantly in front of the, the MPs at the European Parliament in Brussels. Can you imagine if he can do it in front of MPs in Brussels? Can you imagine what actually happens and uh, what uh, lies, what other lies uh, they use to justify their programs and their crimes? Uh, this this uh, uh, guy that I put in the red circle, uh, he is uh, again, uh, or at least was, a uh, high-ranking US official. This is uh, 2011, the inaugura inauguration of uh, the Luger Center. Uh, here, this is uh, Mr. Uh, Andrew Weber, uh, then US Assistant Secretary of Defense for Nuclear, Chemical, and Biological uh, Defense Programs. Currently, he works for this American company, Metabiota, which happens to be uh, one of the defense threat reduction uh, agency contractors at Luga Center. So he signs uh, all the contracts, open the facility, and then uh, went to work for the private contractor. No conflicts of interest, no. Uh, I was uh, shocked. How is it possible? Private companies are allowed to work here to operate with viruses, bacteria, and toxins. Private companies. Uh, they're contracted to perform work for the Pentagon under diplomatic cover. How, how can uh, private companies be allowed to be diplomats without being diplomats. But this is what's, uh, uh, what's happening uh, in Georgia, in Ukraine, uh, in Africa, in all the countries involved in this military program. Um, private contractors are awarded very lucrative contracts worth of uh, $2 billion uh, to create biological weapons. They don't call them biological weapons, they call them um, um, viruses, bacteria, and toxins for defense. I don't understand how a virus can be for defense. This practice is often used by the CIA to provide cover for its agents, uh, the diplomatic immunity, which is provided to private contractors because uh, they are not held accountable to con Congress and they can operate more freely and move around the rule of law. U.S. civilian personnel performing work at the Luger Center have also be, uh, been given diplomatic immunity, although they are not diplomats. Uh, hence, private companies can perform work under diplomatic cover for the U.S. government without being under the direct control of the host state. In this case, the Republic of Georgia. Can you imagine, in the U.K., foreigners came with diplomatic immunity without being diplomats and start to research, in other words, to, to create, genetically modify viruses, bacteria, and toxins. And your country will not be allowed to uh, control them. What is this? For defense? I don't see, I, I don't see what def 
defensive is uh, there in this U.S. Uh, uh, military program uh, in uh, 25 countries around the world. But Robert Kadlik said they don't have a biological weapons program. No, they don't have such program. Now, uh, I want to show you uh, in detail information about these three private American companies performing work at the Luga Center in Georgia. Uh, one of them, the first company, private American company, uh, C CM2M uh, Hill. It was awarded uh, $341.5 uh, million dollars under this Pentagon program. And according to the presentation, which is confidential, but uh, Mr. Kadlik said, no, this is not confidential. Everybody can look at them. Don't ask me how I got access to this confidential presentation, but uh, <laughs> um, anyway, this presentation shows that, see, the subcontractor of uh, the first American company is Batele Memorial Institute. Batele, as a subcontractor, has extensive experience in research on bioagents, as the company already worked on the U.S. bioweapons program under 11 contracts with the U.S. Army in the past, 11 contracts. So these are the former bioweapons um, scientists, which, according to the confidential presentation of the first company, uh, they uh, research viruses, bacteria, and toxins. And this company, the second company, you will never find the, the name of the battalion uh, uh, in the official documents uh, or those documents which are uh, in the public domain. This company, Batele, uh, is indicated here in the confidential presentation. So I, uh, in, I investigated, investigated uh, Batele, if I pronounced correct, correctly, I don't know. Batele um, has a huge number of uh, projects uh, for the Pentagon, for the CIA, for example, one of the projects uh, called Clear Vision, uh, which was uh, carried out in 1997 and, in 2000, uh, and uh, it was completed three years later, a joint investigation by the CIA and Batele Memorial Institute um, reconstructed uh, and tested a Soviet-era anthrax bomblet in order to test its dissemination characteristics. The project stated goal was to assess bioagents dissemination characteristics of bomblets. This is not for defense. I don't know why uh, Robert Kadlik said that they didn't, uh, they don't have such a biological weapons program, but look at what uh, the US did. Research the characteristic, characteristics of anthrax bomblet. And uh, interestingly, the program, uh, the program wasn't uh, and was omitted from the U.S. Biological Weapons Convention declaration submitted to the U.N. Probably they realized that this is not very legal, or at least this is uh, in violation of the U.N. Convention. So this information was omitted. Um, but Tele uh, also operates a top secret biolaboratory. This is the top secret biolaboratory called National um, Biodefense uh, Analysis and Countermeasures Center at Port Detrick, Maryland. Uh, this is in the United States. And uh, I, I checked uh, the money. <laughs> and the money here uh, for actually 20 years. Uh, the first contract, it is uh, 344.4 million federal contracts. The, the other is uh, 70 million contracts. But this is top secret, although uh, and this is the proof that this is top secret. This is document which I uh, also uh, got access to, uh, and I, 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 I'm not allowed to uh, 
to go inside and uh, to see what's, uh, what the United States scientists uh, are doing inside this top secret uh, facility in Maryland. And it is not openly available to anybody who wants to look at it. Uh, I don't want to go into details in terms of what types of viruses, how they genetically modify them. If you are interested and have such knowledge, you can read uh, the projects and the documents um, featured in my article. It is published and it is in, uh, on the website of uh, 21st Century Wire. So I will not take your time now with that. Um, but. I want to stress that these viruses are genetically modified, meaning that uh, they don't just isolate viruses, bacteria, and toxins and research them. They modify them genetically. And I don't see anything defensive in the fact that they genetically modify uh, viruses. When they genetically modify viruses, they may, may uh, use them for and when they use them for military needs, this is something uh, different from defense. This is offensive military program. A third company, American company, involved uh, in uh, the project at the Republic of Georgia. It is called uh, Metabiota. And you saw uh, the American official, which I put in the red uh, circle. Now he works for this company called Metabiota. Uh, this American company has been awarded 18.4 million federal contracts under the Pentagon Defense Threat Reduction Agency program in Georgia and in Ukraine for scientific and technical consulting services. Metabiota products and services include global field-based biological threat research, pathogen discovery, outbreak response, and clinical trials. This is what is written on their website, whatever that means. But uh, when I checked the US Federal Contracts Registry, I found out that this work includes uh, $3.1 million project for the Pentagon in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is one of the countries at the epicenter of the Ebola virus here. And um, Metabiota worked uh, on Pentagon's uh, projects on the epicenter of the Ebola virus, uh, where uh, uh, epicenter of the Ebola crisis, where three US biolaboratories are situated. And interestingly, if you check the dates, and the years, 2012. This is the time when Metabiota was sent in Sierra Leone for work for the Pentagon in 2012. The Ebola crisis and uh, the outbreak of Ebola in Sierra Leone and in uh, this part of Africa was in 2015, when the project ended. This raises a lot of questions and it is very suspicious but we don't know what work Metabiota performed for the Pentagon. Because although Mr. Kadlec claims that these biolaboratories are openly available, no, they are not. And we can't uh, get access to see what uh, these uh, US uh, citizens with diplomatic immunity and the diplomatic cover uh, are doing uh, in these military biolaboratories. Uh, this, in short, are the Pentagon's projects and experiments at the Luga Center, and I want to start with uh, this project, military experiments on biting insects. These photos, for example, this one, and these two photos. I, uh, I got these photos from Georgian people. They sent me these photos, for example, this one. It is a biting fly in a bathroom in Tbilisi. These flies also are uh, on, um, uh, also I got them from people from Georgia. And uh, people told me something which, which is very scary. Uh, they said that uh, for the first time in Georgia, 
For example, they go to take a shower, and all of a sudden, they are being bitten by such flies while naked, and they can't protect themselves, and they don't have explanation as to why and from where these biting flies, um, uh, how to fight them, and how and from where they're coming. So I checked in the documents, and in 2014, the Luga Center was equipped with an insect facility and launched a project uh, on such biting flies. And the project covered a larger geographic area outside of Georgia, uh, the Caucasus. And in uh, the following years, as a result of this project, the Tbilisi has been infested with biting flies. And these biting insects, look at this one, and these flies, they live indoors in bathrooms all year long, which was not typical behavior of this species in Georgia previously. Normally, these uh, flies and their, uh, their uh, season in Georgia is exceptionally short, from June to September. This photo was sent to me in November. so. <laughs> Normally, these flies should not be in the bathrooms, or they, they, they uh, can't survive. But look, they are in the bathrooms. They are on the streets. They are everywhere, and they survive, even in uh, the sub-zero temperatures in the mountains in Georgia. I asked a lot of uh, my friends in Georgia, and they all confirmed this problem with, with the insects, but they don't know from where these insects, uh, insects come and how to fight them. Biting flies, uh, the same in Georgia here, the same uh, uh, flies to those in Georgia appeared in neighboring Dagestan. Dagestan is a republic uh, from the Russian Federation. And according to local people, they bite and cause rushes. Their breeding habitats are house drains. And um, only if you, if you think logically what and how flies from here came to Dagestan, it's not a uh, long distance, but uh, these are flies. They can't. Uh, uh, it, it will take them uh, kilometers, and it is a mountainous area. This is not possible. Probably somebody helped them to go to Dagestan in the people's uh, houses. The disease uh, is native, uh, the disease which these flies carry, it is uh, native to Iraq and Afghanistan. How come flies from uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, how they appeared in Georgia and in Dagestan. It is, it is something that uh, I couldn't ask uh, Mr. Kadlik because uh, there wasn't enough space in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, documentation about uh, the uh, US uh, biological uh, programs involving insects in the past. I don't come, and I'm not from a generation which has much and many memories from, uh, the, bio, uh, from the time where bioweapons were not banned from the UN conventions. So uh, for me, it was a huge surprise to find that it, is, it was a normal practice in the United States, not only in the United States, to uh, test um, viruses on insects, and uh, here I showed documents for those who, like me, didn't know the existence of such experiments on insects. It is terrifying. They infected insects with uh, dangerous, with little viruses, and tested if these insects can disseminate the virus, and if these uh, insects, through a, a bites, can transmit viruses to humans. Uh, if you want to familiarize yourself, you can read about Operation White Coat, which was uh, performed on humans, not only on insects. 
mosquitoes. This is, uh, I don't know, do you have problems with mosquitoes in uh, here in the UK? But recently I read that uh, UK company, o Oxitec, uh, produces GM uh, mosquitoes and uh, disseminate them in uh, Brazil, where the Zika virus was a problem. I don't know. Why. They say uh, they tried to reduce the population of mosquitoes, but the result was Zika virus. So probably here you must be very careful and be very and mind the mosquitoes. Yesterday in the bathroom I saw a very big mos mosquito. <laughs> I haven't seen such a big mosquito in my country, I don't know. Uh, if you want to read a lot about, uh, more about the mosquitoes and, their, and the tests that the Pentagon uh, um, has been performing on them, uh, on them uh, in the past and now, uh, you, you can follow these uh, links. What shocked me was one document in particular in the past. The US Army tested how to kill 625,000 people for just 29 cents cost per death. And uh, it turns out it's very cheap to kill 625,000 people. Can you imagine uh, what these people were doing in the past? This is the, the very same what they are doing now. If uh, this program was offensive, this means that the current program is also uh, for uh, military needs for uh, offense, not for defense. I want to compare what they're doing now with what they did in the past, because this proves that their military program have never ended. Um, different operations by the Pentagon, uh, they have names in the past. These are declassified documents. Uh, they spread uh, insects uh, from planes, from the ground, whatever means you can imagine to test how these insects would survive and would they, uh, would they be able to transmit viruses after such uh, fall from an airplane. And it turned out that, uh, that yes, mosquitoes can um, bite even after such uh, fall from an airplane. Uh, interestingly, in these declassified documents, there is a section here which is not declassified. It is called um, mass production of uh, one particular uh, species. Aedes aeguptis, if I read it correctly. And this means that uh, the same species of mosquitoes, which are alleged to be the vectors of dengue virus, Zika virus, uh, yellow fever virus, they are still being produced. Because uh, this part of the document is not uh, declassified. And this means that the project is still ongoing. Although we are talking about operations carried out uh, 40 years ago. Why they don't want to uh, declassify this part about the production, mass production of mosquitoes? Probably because now they are using this technique and this mass production of uh, uh, this type of mosquito, which causes Zika virus, uh, malaria, and other dangerous diseases. Mass production of mosquitoes for military needs. But this is not, uh, but they are openly available to anybody who wants to look at them. Again, I want to stress. Another operation, photos. Uh, I, for me, it was very interesting to see volunteers. Here they stay and wait for the mosquitoes to bite them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to comment on that, but this is what they did. Now I will show you. Georgia, the same. See here. The volunteers, they wear the mosquitoes. Georgia, these are not volunteers, but uh, they also wear the mosquitoes. And all of a sudden in Georgia, while waiting the mosquitoes and researching them, they discovered the very same uh, species that I showed you a few slides ago, uh, here, mass production of Aedes 
Kai Gupti, the very same mosquito, all of a sudden the tropical type of mosquito, they found it in Georgia. Never before seen tropical mosquito. It was found all of a sudden here in this tires. This is a photo which I uh, found uh, on the website of uh, the Georgian Ministry of Health. When I published this uh, investigation, the only re reaction of the Georgian authorities was to delete <laughs> the information. <laughs> and um, luckily, uh, there is an archive, and uh, I, I can retrieve uh, the information. But uh, it's very indicative of the fact that probably the Georgian authorities have what to hide from their own people, not from me, but from their own people. They don't want uh, the Georgians to know that uh, military biolaboratory uh, inside the capital Tbilisi is uh, finding all of a sudden tropical mosquitoes. And while, uh, while researching uh, in general, mosquitoes, and all of a sudden they find such never before seen mosquitoes. Interestingly, if you check where these mosquitoes are, south of Russia, uh, Georgia, and north, northern Turkey, very close together, also another type of tropical mosquito never before seen in Georgia. You can see this type of mosquito only in, uh, in southern Russia, in Tbilisi, in uh, uh, Georgia, and in Turkey. Strange coincidence. Uh, not so strange if you start to read the projects of the Pentagon on uh, anthrax. Pentagon scientists at Lugas Center researched uh, uh, the Russian strain of uh, anthrax. Uh, and they, they researched uh, the vaccine, uh, actually the, the Russian type of the virus for which Russia has vaccine. And what's uh, defensive is then the fact that the Pentagon research uh, the only type of uh, anthrax for which Russia has vaccine. This is uh, very legitimate question, and um, if you are interested in the anthrax projects, you can read the full uh, information about them. Uh, but I will not waste now your time because I want to show you other uh, diseases which are spreading in Georgia. Do I have time? Okay. Okay. So. Uh, this is a disease for probably for which you have never heard of. It is not popular, but it is uh, little. Um, and it is called Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Um, 34 people became infected, among which a four year old child with this uh, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever in uh, 2014 as a result of a Pentagon project on Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. I put the documents about this uh, Pentagon project. If you want to read it, you can. But what I want to stress, the project included tests on patients with fever symptoms and the collection of ticks as possible vectors of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever for laboratory analysis. But it turned out that uh, from all collected uh, ticks, only one was positive, and all blood samples of the animals were negative for this disease, meaning that uh, the outbreak was not natural and the virus was spread intentionally among uh, all these 34 villagers, by the way. Uh, these are people uh, from rural areas in Georgia who, who has, have no knowledge of uh, vaccines and whatever. So uh, all of a sudden, these people got infected. Only humans were infected. Now, 
the animals in the uh, in the in, in the infected uh, villages and the ticks they were negative it's strange how the virus jumped from nowhere to the people uh, there is no logical explanation other than intentional spread of the virus uh, here I prove uh, using uh, documents from again from the Pentagon that this the virus was spread intentional because they say if you notice uh, something which is not natural uh, if for example you you con uh, contract a disease and you don't know the source of the disease and uh, if uh, 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 the unusual uh, Routes of exposure, such as inhalational routes uh, that normally occur uh, through other explosions. If you notice something unusual, this means that you are a victim of a bioterrorism uh, attack. So, in their words, bioterrorism attack was carried out in Georgia with this Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Interestingly, at the same time, such attack if I use the words of uh, the Pentagon, happened in uh, Afghanistan. 237 cases of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever have also been reported across Afghanistan, 41 of which were fatal as of December 2017. Um, interestingly, Afghanistan is one of the 25 countries across the world with Pentagon biolaboratories on their territory. The project um, is part of this huge cooperative biological uh, defensive program, which is funded by the Pentagon and the contractors working uh, at uh, the Luga Center in Georgia are the same uh, for the program in Afghanistan. So we have the same diseases spreading in Georgia and in Afghanistan, and the same private American companies working in the same biolaboratories in Afghanistan and in Georgia. Uh, this is uh, strange. Georgia is not that close to Afghanistan, how this virus spread to Afghanistan. Um, this is something that, again, I couldn't ask Mr. Kadlik. Why the Pentagon collects and studies bats? Uh, for me, it was shocking to realize that uh, the U.S. Army is used to collect and to study bats. Bats uh, are allegedly uh, the reservoir hosts uh, to the Ebola virus, Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome, and other deadly diseases. Uh, and, uh, for example, in Georgia, the U.S. Army collected 221 bats. Uh, which were euthanized at the Luga Center for studies. And um, also, uh, such collection of bats uh, was performed not only in Georgia, in a number of countries abroad where the Pentagon has biolaboratories. So, uh, interestingly, I want to show you something. We are, we are told that the Middle East uh, uh, Respiratory Syndrome or the Ebola virus somehow jump from bats to, for example, camels, and they end up in humans. Although uh, we don't have proof that this can happen because humans don't have uh, direct contact with bats, so uh, it is not proven how this virus can jump from bats to humans. Uh, but the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome is one of the viruses that have been engineered by the United States and studied by the Pentagon, as well as uh, influenza and um, other diseases. And confirmation of this practice is uh, the Obama's uh, temporary ban in 2014 on uh, government funding for such dual use uh, research. The moratorium was lifted in 2017 and experiments have continued. Um, I don't understand how can this be legal and possible. Scientists are allowed to genetically engineer viruses in order to study them. 
I don't understand why and how this can be legal, but in the United States, it, it is legal. So you have um, the legal uh, protection to develop biological weapons because genetically modified viruses, uh, they can be used as biological weapons. The aim is to make them more lethal and more, more deadly. This is what they are doing. Uh, I will not take your time in detail again, uh, but I wanted to show again documents uh, about another disease in Georgia, tularemia. And I want to come to Ukraine. Uh, here the Pentagon has 11 uh, biolaboratories in this uh, former Soviet Union country bordering on Russia. Again, the uh, according to the agreement between the United States and the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, um, the information under this program, it is sensitive information. So uh, these 11 biolaboratories are not openly available to anybody who wants to look at them. Uh, the Ukrainian government is prohibited from public disclosure of uh, sensitive information about the program, and Ukraine is obliged to transfer to the Pentagon dangerous pathogens for biological research. But the Pentagon has been granted access to certain state secrets of Ukraine in connection with the projects under their agreement. Again, the same like uh, the case in Georgia. Biowarfare scientists under diplomatic cover. Uh, the personnel of the United States, again, performs work under diplomatic cover. I'm talking about uh, scientists. I'm not talking about diplomats. Why do they need diplomatic cover? And why do they need diplomatic vehicles to transport what? It's strange. Why do a scientist need? Uh, a diplomatic vehicle, probably to hide something. Uh, these are all the documents, um, the money which the Pentagon spent on uh, each and every one of these military biolaboratories. Here is one uh, a military biolaboratory in the city of uh, Kharkov in Ukraine. Uh, two years ago, in the same city, at least uh, 20 Ukrainian soldiers died from uh, flu-like virus in just two days, with uh, 200 more being hospitalized. This is in the same city where the Pentagon has biolaboratory. Can you imagine if in the United Kingdom, 20 soldiers die from flu, and uh, 200 more are hospitalized, and in the whole of the country, 364 people die from flu, uh, this would be a huge scandal. In Ukraine, this wasn't a problem. This wasn't a scandal because the Ukrainian government did not uh, uh, report on the dead Ukrainian soldiers in Kharkov. People didn't know about these cases because under the agreements with the United States, the Ukrainian government, this is not a sovereign uh, government. It is prohibited from informing its own citizens on sensitive information, on information involving the US uh, military personnel with diplomatic in immunity, performing work uh, on their own territory. Can you imagine what a government is this? Uh, they serve the interests of uh, a foreign country, not the interests of their own citizens. A lot of other cases uh, in Ukraine, for example, police investigate infection with incurable disease. Whatever that means, uh, uh, nobody knows what this disease is. But it is incurable according to documents which I read uh, from uh, the, the Ukrainian prosecutors. Uh, they call this disease incurable, but they don't name it. And they, uh, they can't find the source of uh, this uh, incurable disease. But in, uh, there are a few uh, interesting um, cases involving uh, hepatitis A. And it turned out that all the outbreaks, not only hepatitis, also botulinum toxin, I will show you in a short while, all these outbreaks, they happen in cities where the Pentagon has military biolaboratories. But the police investigates uh, uh, an unknown source. No, it is known. But the police of Ukraine doesn't have access to this military biolaboratory because 
the military personnel of the United States has diplomatic immunity. So these military bio laboratories on the sovereign uh, uh, territory of, the, of Ukraine, they are not under the control of Ukraine. And uh, nobody knows what they are doing inside these military bio laboratories. Why uh, do I show this? Because it was removed. When I published my article, this information was removed. Uh, it is uh, related to one uh, of the Pentagon uh, private uh, contractors uh, called Southern Research Institute. And uh, the same private contractor listed on its website uh, what types of uh, pathogens it's been researching. And one of the pathogens was exactly uh, uh, botulinum toxin. The same, uh, this, uh, the same uh, toxin which caused uh, deaths in Ukraine. But they removed this information from their website. Uh, luckily, I, I have uh, backup of everything, so <laughs> they, can't, they can't hide it. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I want to show you, because probably I don't have much time. Uh, the, the private American companies involved in the project in Ukraine. Again, the same company, Metabiota, which uh, worked uh, in Sierra Leone, which worked in Georgia. The same company appears in Ukraine. Here, uh, interestingly, appears Russia, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Um, a former Soviet uh, defector uh, researched anthrax with one of the private American uh, contractors in Ukraine. The name of this uh, uh, Russian who defected uh, to the United States, Ken Alibek, probably it is uh, not very you, it is not fam you are not familiar with him, but uh, this is um, the main expert on anthrax of the Soviet Union. After his defection to the United States, he was engaged in, engaged in Pentagon research, research projects. And it turned out that the same uh, scientist, Soviet scientist, worked with Southern Research Institute. And Southern Research Institute is a company a uh, private American company which works in Ukraine and which also uh, worked uh, in the past uh, under uh, 16 contracts uh, between 1951 and 1962 uh, for the US Army under this uh, military biological weapons program. So you have the same companies from the past. They worked uh, under biological weapons programs in the past. Now, again, the same companies uh, 40 years later, even more, 50 years later. Now, the same companies continue to work under biological weapons programs. <coughs> uh, here comes the US Congress. Uh, the same company, Southern Research Institute, um, lobbied the US Congress and the US Department of State had for issues related to research and development for US intelligence. Um, the lobbying activities in coincided with the start of the Pentagon projects on uh, biolaboratories in Ukraine and other former Soviet states. The company paid uh, $250,000 uh, for lobbying the then uh, Senator Jeff Sessions, this is uh, the US Attorney General now, Gen uh, Jeff Sessions, they lobbied uh, him for research for US intelligence, whatever that means. Research, <coughs> biological research for US intelligence. And over a 10 year period, 2006 until 2016, the same American uh, contractor in Ukraine paid one point uh, two million for lobbying uh, the US Senate, House of Representatives, and uh, the Pentagon. And uh, Senator Jeff Sessions' aides on Capitol Hill 
Watson Donald is now a senior director of Southern Research Institute. And uh, for me, uh, this is, uh, I, I can't understand, I don't know the legislation there and here in the United Kingdom, but if in my country uh, somebody pays 1.2 million to the, for example, Bulgarian Parliament or uh, the Bulgarian Ministry of Defense, this is bribe. <laughs> they pay to, to get contracts. So this is, uh, this is legal in the United States. This is uh, shocking for me. Here, I want to go directly to uh, the bioweapons factory of the United States in the United States. It is called the Gway Proving Ground. Here, the Gway Proving Ground. And here, this facility, the Life Sciences Division at the Gway Proving Ground uh, produces and tests uh, aerosolized bioagents. And this is according to a report, military <coughs> report, uh, published in 2012. I was surprised to read in the public domain documents about uh, the production of biological agents and simulants, um, not only biological agents, also toxins. And I was surprised that this information is in the public domain. But see, this is special equipment, scientists, this is not from the white helmets, this is real. So see what they do, different experiments, aerosolized viruses and bacteria and toxins. And I realized something, my explanation, why this report, this report in particular, was published. Uh, you remember Putin a few months ago, he announced that now Russia has developed um, a new type of nuclear mis uh, missiles and they have uh, untraceable nuclear weapons. So I thought probably the United States uh, publicized this uh, information and uh, made it available to the uh, wider public because they want the world to know what they have and what they can do. I have no other explanation uh, as to why uh, they pride themselves on this. See, uh, dissemination by explosives. This is in the public domain. They confess that they uh, test dissemination of uh, biological uh, simulants and chemicals by explosives. Here they test them, again they test them. Uh, uh, liquid dissemination, powder dissemination, um, dissemination of the test grid, aerosol dissemination. So these are all components of uh, biological weapons program and they confessed to doing that. And uh, my conclusion is this. They want the world to know what they have and what they can do. Uh, it is similar to what Putin did. He wanted the world to know what Russia has. Uh, something very funny <laughs> for me. The United States stole bacteria from Saddam Hussein's bioweapons factory. <laughs> yes, this is true. Uh, this bacteria, uh, BT uh, al Hakam. It is um, uh, named after the uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, uh, bioweapons factory. It was collected in Iraq by the UN uh, Special Commission led by the United States in 2003. Uh, it is named after al Hakam. Uh, we don't know if there was such a bioweapons production factory, actually. This is what the CIA say here. They show a photo of this bacteria collected from al Hakam in Iraq, this bacteria. And 
The same bacteria here appears in documents which I obtained from the US Federal Contracts Registry. And uh, according to this project uh, published in 2017, the Pentagon performs field tests with this bacteria, Al uh, Hakam, which CNN stole from uh, Saddam Hussein's factory. And this bacteria uh, is used uh, in the United States for production of GM corn resistant to pests. So people eat this bacteria. And probably they must be very thankful to Saddam Hussein for creating such bacteria. Again, look what they are doing. Special tests on uh, uh, bacteria and different type of simulants in a wind tunnel, again for defense. Um, and I want to compare the field tests that the United States performed in the past with the field tests that they are performing now. You, you can't see any difference between what they did in the past and what they are doing now. So this means that their uh, biological weapons program never ended. Um, I talked to people, uh, local people, and they told me that um, in uh, 2017, uh, they reported on a drone disseminating white powder in uh, Chechnya. This is a republic of the Russian Federation next to the border with Georgia. I asked uh, the Georgian authorities how can they explain uh, such a drone from Georgia going to Chechnya and spreading powder? They refused to comment. Uh, but I'm not surprised, because there is no other explanation as to a military biological program aimed at uh, their main rival, Russia. Interestingly, the Pentagon has a private um, contractor on the Russia-Georgia border. We don't know what this and why this contractor was uh, needed for the Pentagon and what exactly job it uh, needs to do. But the same company uh, called Parsons Government Services International performs work uh, for the Pentagon in Syria, Libya, uh, Jordan, Lebanon. And we all know what happens in these countries or what is left from them. Uh, either this company facilitates terrorists or to pass uh, in Libya and Syria, for example, or arms them and uh, facilitate the weapon supplies. So the same company from Syria, from Lebanon, uh, from Lebanon, from Libya, it is in Georgia on the border with Russia and uh, drone appear. This is very, very scary. This is uh, another Pentagon uh, agency working uh, and involved in the program. Uh, it is called the uh, Safe Genes. This is the name of the program, Safe Genes. It is a $65 million program in gene editing. This is the sum that the Pentagon invests in gene editing, gene editing of insects. And uh, another military program called Insect Allies. Uh, GM insects are engineered to transfer modified genes to plants. The uh, $10 million uh, project includes both gene editing in insects in, and uh, in the viruses that they transmit. Can you imagine what we eat, actually? They can produce uh, GM insects. They can produce viruses. And they can uh, insert these viruses, GM viruses, in the GM insects, target the plant so that the plant would be pest-free. This is their justification, of course. This is against pests. No, they, they just produce and they invest $65 million to be uh, for us to eat pest-free plants. Can you imagine if this is true? And 
if they really want uh, to solve the problem with the pests, if this plant is infected with GM virus through a GM insect, can you imagine what will happen to us and when this uh, vegetable or fruit, when we eat it, what we actually eat? And um, I don't believe this explanation because uh, otherwise it would not be the Pentagon. Uh, that invests 65 million. It would be their department for agriculture, probably, if they have such a department. Another interesting, uh, no, I forget another interesting uh, uh, project. It is an uh, uh, ongoing military program for genome engineering in insects. The Pentagon stated uh, objective is to engineer GM organisms so that they can resist certain temperatures, change their habitat and food sources. This is the document about this uh, project, which uh, reminded me of what the people in Georgia told me. They said that they can't kill uh, these flies. Uh, they can't get rid of them. They are everywhere in their bathrooms. They buy them while naked, and they can't do anything. And I uh, read this project. Really, they can produce, and they pay money for private contractors to produce GM insects, which can resist uh, different temperatures. Probably they are very successful because in Georgia people said no, we can't, uh, we can't do anything. They, they, uh, this, this uh, insect, these flies, they are immortal. We can't get rid of them. What is uh, the third project? Genetically engineered humans. Probably in the beginning uh, it sounded like a science fiction for me, but no, <laughs> this is real. Here are the documents. This is not science fiction. The Pentagon. <sighs> wants to genetically engineer humans. Uh, this is a project called Advanced Tools for Mammalian Genome Engineering Project. In this project, it is not written that they want to engineer humans. I mean, the title is something which is very, uh, uh, the topic is general. But when you start the documents, you see that they want to genetically engineer humans. They want to insert uh, an additional 47th artificial chromosome into human cells. And this chromosome will, will deliver new genes that will be used for engineering the human body. We don't know if this project was successful or not. Uh, we have information from the U.S. Federal Contracts Registry that this was performed uh, last year, uh, it was completed last year, and we don't know the results. We just have confirmation that they worked on a project involving uh, tests on additional 47th artificial chromosome into human cells. Uh, Classified research here. They, are, they have written that everything here is classified. They confess, finally, they confess that this is classified and it is not openly available to anybody who wants to look at them. Uh, classified projects um, called JSON reports. Uh, and uh, these reports, they include uh, American scientists that were carried out by American scientists, which were paid by the Pentagon to research this. Synthetic viruses, designer diseases, binary bioweapons, stealth viruses, host swapping diseases. So these are the diseases, for example, like the Ebola virus. Somehow they jump from the bat, they jump into the humans. This means uh, host swapping diseases and according to uh, partial information. I don't know what exactly uh, the JSON uh, reports include because they are classified, but I found another report which luckily wasn't <laughs> classified. And um, in this military, military report, uh, authored by a scientist from uh, the US Air Force uh, uh, University, 
Uh, it is called Biotechnology, Genetically Engineered Pathogens. In this report, they cite uh, the Jason's reports. They forgot that they're classified. No, serious, this is not a joke. And they provided information about the classified uh, uh, report. Not in full, but at least we have any idea uh, about uh, the secretive uh, US military program involving five types of genetically modified pathogens that can be used as bioweapons. One of the bioweapons, for example, it is ethnic biological weapon. This was researched, but it is classified and we don't know the results. Ethnic uh, biological weapons uh, a theoretical weapon that aim, uh, aimed to harm primarily people of specific ethnicities or genotypes. Um, uh, and what I found was that uh, the United States collects uh, biological material from certain ethnic groups, Russians and Chinese. These are the documents. But this is for defense. Just two, two minutes, Dilian. Okay. So uh, if you want to read what types of biological samples, DNA uh, from Russians, the Pentagon has been collecting, you can read the documents again from Chinese documents from about that. Uh, I want to talk uh, for one minute about the so-called tobacco vaccines. The Pentagon has been investing uh, million of dollars, at least $100 million uh, in vaccines production from tobacco plants. This means that they use uh, the tobacco, the plant, and insert uh, viruses, for example, bacteria, uh, Ebola virus or influenza, insert into this plant so that the, the, the vaccine can be developed in this plant. So, so they used uh, the plants uh, as a substance for the vaccine. And uh, interestingly, the companies which were awarded uh, the lucrative Pentagon uh, contracts, they are owned by Philip Morris and uh, British American Tobacco. <laughs> So now British American Tobacco and Philip Morris, through their subsidiaries, produce vaccines. Uh, in conclusion, I want to, to, to quote the Article 8 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, uh, which defines biological experiments as war crimes. The United States, however, is not a state party to the international treaty, and it can be held accountable. Uh, this is, in short, the, the facts that I found. I'm continuing to work on, uh, on this project, journalistic project, and uh, hope to be able to release uh, and broadcast a documentary soon. So I'll be lucky if I have your comments so that you let me know what is interesting for the viewers and what you want to see in such a documentary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a truly outstanding presentation. And um, uh, maybe, maybe you can show people what it's like to try and get in the elevator outside here. <laughs> <laughs> but Diliana, just before, oh, you've taken the headset off. Oh no, come on, come on, yeah, the microphone here. Because in just one minute, I would just like you to uh, share with the audience what you uncovered in terms of the contract between Port and Down in the UK and the London Underground. Uh, I found the uh, documents proving that uh, the Pentagon has invested $70 million uh, in uh, programs uh, uh, at Port on Down, the same scheme like the Pentagon Biolaboratories in Ukraine, in Georgia, Port on Down was funded by the Pentagon to perform projects uh, 
uh, involving uh, viruses, bacteria, toxins, nerve agents. Uh, but this was work performed and paid for by the Pentagon, not by uh, you as taxpayers, meaning that this, uh, and meaning uh, I was uh, asking myself, would the British people approve of such project? No, you will not approve of such project. That is why they are doing this biological experiments behind your back, funded by a foreign country, because you will not approve of that, I'm sure. And the testing and the contract between Transport for London, the 2013 contract between Transport for London and Port and Down. Um, according to these documents, Port and Down scientists performed uh, tests uh, on unwitting uh, commuters at the Lond uh, at London uh, tube. Uh, they released uh, gas. We don't know exactly what they released because what they say turned out to be uh, not. Uh, the real uh, gas used. They write in the documents that they are allowed to change and redact information if it concerns uh, national security issues. So they will tell you we used uh, harmless uh, gas, but uh, we are not sure if this is true and what exactly gas was used. You might want to think before you use the London Underground again. But if you want to, uh, it's outstanding research, and thank goodness for researchers like Diliana Ganshiva. Yeah.